Well, fresh details are now emerging of how the arms dealer Abhishek Varma and his associates systematically penetrated the Defence Ministry and the Indian Armed Forces to ensure that rifles, carbines and pistols manufactured by the firm Six Hour were favoured to win contracts worth billions of dollars. Earlier this week, NDTV brought you the story of how Varma and his Romanian wife Anka were transferred a sum of $50,000 to be paid to a so-called VIP to push through a deal for rifles for the Indian Army. All right, well, today new details on how Varma was allegedly able to use this VIP to, uh, to ensure that a complaint about the 6 hour 716 rifles was overlooked to ensure that it remained in the Indian Army's competition for the rifles. This is a story which was brought to us by my colleague Namrita Brar, who you saw there. We'll get her back in just a few moments. Now, the details we share with you today are also being investigated by the CBI. And we want to be clear that NDTV cannot independently verify the accuracy of the email transcripts that we've been able to access. Now, what is this all about? Firstly, in an email dated the 23rd of July 2011, and we have this email over here, we can just actually show it to you, we have this email over here, right, one among a series of emails, and we'll point out the relevant sections in a few moments. In this email, Abhishek Varma, who used the email ID manager at intercompany mail, wrote to his associates in six hour that an anonymous complaint had been received by the defense ministry on gun trials conducted on SIG rifles, sniper rifles in the United States by Indian Army officers. Now, what did this complaint say which Varma was able to access? It said that Indian evaluators were unable to reach the firing range for trials on time and the firing range was subsequently not available. The complaint said that Indian evaluators were able to extrapolate the performance of the gun by testing it at a range of 300 meters and not the mandated 800 meters. In other words, a complaint has been received in the Defense Ministry. Abhishek Varma allegedly accesses that complaint. How he does that, we are still not clear. And he knows that there is a complaint against the gun of the company which he is working for, Six Hour. Now, Six Hour also, according to that complaint, looked after the Indian evaluators and the wife of one of the officers was actually taking, uh, taken shopping. They were wined and dined apparently in the United States. The complainant in that letter also says, based on this, six hours should be dropped from the competition. Quite clearly, this got Abhishek Varma very worried. Now, he has written in this letter, if he, that is the Director General of Acquisition in the Defense Ministry, takes cognizance of the anonymous complaint, then the entire deal would be scrapped and retendered. Well, let's move on and see where this is all headed. Let's bring you some key questions. Now, in his email to his colleague, Varma also shares details of the performance of all of the guns in the trials. Now, I have this with me over here. I'm not going to show you any of these performance data because it's probably a national security uh, secret at this stage, and it cannot and should not be revealed. But this was what he was able to access. Now, this is the top secret, highly classified report based on an army report submitted to the DG, the Director General of Acquisition in the Defense Ministry. Key question, how did one of the companies, in other words, Six Hour, Abhishek Varma's company, participating in a major weapons tender, gain knowledge about the performance of a competing firm from, say, Israel during day and night trials? Another key question, how did Varma know how each gun had been evaluated? Because this letter also shows how each gun had been evaluated during daytime and during nighttime as well. All right, I'm now joined by my colleague Namrita Brar, who actually had all of these details. Now, Namrita, how were reportedly very important people actually helping Varma, right, in trying to ensure that his gun, Six Hour, was not dropped? Vishnu, there are two sides to the story. There is one camp which believes that Verma is a con man who's masquerading on his VIP contacts, but there is a deeper story there which really says that some of these documents, including very crucial documents coming straight from the MOD, including the Army Chief VK Singh's 
special procurement plans for the entire Indian Army plans are accurate. And that tells you that yes, there were a whole number of VIPs at very top levels of the Ministry of Defense, Ministry of Home Affairs and other senior government officials helping out Burma in an elaborate nexus. All right, Namrita, let's now bring our viewers details of what Varma does to ensure that Six Hours Rifle is not blacklisted and this meant using these contacts. Now on the 25th of July 2011, Varma writes to his colleagues, I will find out from my friends how something can be done and at what cost. This is an actual copy of that email. We have it over here. If we can just show this part, I will find out from my friends what and how something can be done and what would be the cost. So here, Varma telling six hour representatives in the United States that look, he's going to do something, but it'll come at a price. Now, in another email, and here's where it gets even more murky, Varma writes, the issue was discussed with the VIPs today. The VIP will invoke the clause of no action should be taken on anonymous complaints. Now, the VIP is not really concerned with the outcome of the tender, rights, Varma, as that would be decided on commercial bids. Therefore, the VIP would like to be paid half immediately to take the assignment and the other half on success. Success, by his definition, I'm quoting from this letter, is when the financial envelope of SIG 6 hour is also included in the opening of the financial bids of all the parties. All right. Again, it's all over here in this letter. How is the VIP actually going to ensure that six hour is not dropped out? He will or she will invoke the policy of no action should be taken on anonymous complaints. Because remember, the complaint I was referring to earlier on was an anonymous complaint. All right. Now, the damages for the short project would be $220,000. Varma tells his representatives that, look, it's going to be $220,000 is what the VIP is going to be demanding. And there are stages of payment which have all, also been outlined in this letter. $110,000 US dollars immediately and the other half as soon as our company is invited to financial bid opening. All right. Now, Namrita, uh, let's just come back to you. Did SIG have to pay the bribe just to get considered because it still uh, not got the contract? So what exactly was the bribe all about? I mean, what was the objective over here? Just to simplify this for our viewers. Vishnu, two parts here. One is the fact that this bribe was paid to get the anonymous complaint against Six Hour on the trials of the 716 assault rifles, which are sniper rifles basically for the Indian Army. They wanted to get an anonymous complaint against that particular contract dropped. Now, this was very important because remember, Six Hour is also in the contention for several other contracts. And if it had blacklist, been blacklisted from the sniper rifle contract, it would have been blacklisted from all the other contracts emerging from the Ministry of Defense, which also includes the $1 billion in SARS assault rifles uh, order, which is one of the biggest, largest uh, procurements in the world in recent times. So that was the real importance. And secondly, this could also the, the be a replacement, The replacement for the INSAS rifles. That had given out... Uh, Yes, it could have also been a counter-retaliation by allegedly Beretta and their agents because Abhishek Varma had earlier in the year sent out anonymous complaints allegedly against Beretta. So there's all this, uh, you know, uh, arms dealer retaliation which is also underlying this particular instance. Okay. Now, how did the actual money get to India? Because we've been able to get details of how exactly that money flow happened. Again, another document in my hand. This is another document. What exactly does this say? It says uh, that keen to ensure, well, let me, let me bring it into perspective before I show you that letter. Keen to ensure that the process to bribe the so-called VIP happens quickly. Varma sent an email, this one on the 26th of July, 2011, in which he writes, Gilly has spoken to Ron and they have to wire $50,000 tomorrow Tuesday or latest Wednesday for business development in India and this cannot be delayed as each day counts in Delhi. All right. So quite clearly pushing it. Now, this moved very fast because we've got another document over here. The same document that you see on the side of your screen. On the 26th of July 2011, an account is opened at JP Morgan Chase Bank, uh, New York and $51,000 is deposited into it and on the 2nd of August 2011, 
there is an email from Varma's colleague C. Edmonds Allen that the transfer to Ganton, which is Varma's company, is complete. This is actually a copy of the Chase transfer account, which has actually taken place. Now, Namrita, back to you. Do we have any details now on who this VIP, they were trying to bribe, who he was? That's the million dollar question, or in this case, the billion dollar question. Uh, we do not have confirmation on exactly who the VIP is, though these documents do allege certain names, and these are names going up right to the top level. There has been name dropping uh, from Joint Secretary uh, levels to even higher, the ministerial level. So there are a certain set of names. We don't have confirmation exactly about this VIP's identity, and we do not have the money trail going into this VIP account. So far, we have the money trail which shows that Six Hour Asia transferred this to Ganton, which is one of Burma's shell companies based in US, which in turn transferred it to Ganton, India, another of Burma's uh, shell companies in India, and the money did reach Burma. Once again, no confirmation on the exact name of the VIP, but we believe that it is a person extremely, extremely senior in the organization and entire government. All right, all right. Namrita, last part, we're getting to the end of this. You've seen the evidence that we brought you today. We've showed you the money trail. We've showed you how he was able to, Abhishek Varma and his colleagues were, and his wife were able to access top secret data. So what's the bottom line? Now, the six hour 716 rifle has never been blacklisted. It's still running, it's still in the fray. It remains in the competition. Now, there are reports that SIG was actually allowed to showcase the range of the gun later on in trials in India. Remember, when we began this exclusive, we explained how there were question marks on how the trial process in the US didn't actually work out. We are now being told that, in fact, the trials for the range of the gun were allowed to take place in India subsequently. Is that a breach of, of order? That's what we don't know as yet. Unanswered question, who is the VIP who helped Varma ensure that the SIG gun was not blacklisted? And are Varma's claims to his colleagues of having a VIP friend genuine in the first place, or is he misleading them? That could well be the case, but what we do know is that a money transfer did take place. Um, Namrita, last question, who is the real Abhishek Varma? Is he one of India's most powerful arms agents, or is he masquerading as one? Vishnu, that's a fascinating question and everyone's trying to cobble up pieces, including the CBI, the FBI and all the investigative agencies. They don't have a real answer. My sources in these investigative agencies themselves aren't all, uh, completely convinced about the accuracy of all these documents, but many of them are accurate and therein lies the dilemma. You cannot write off Abhishek Verma. He is not just a con man who had an elaborate lifestyle known to blackmail officials uh, using improper photographs, uh, used to give gifts of Rolex and Cartier to government officials, take them on overseas sponsored visits and so forth. That was his modus operandi to know them and bribes and commission of course. But there are so many sensitive documents, including the ones we've already detailed out here, uh, the special uh, procurement requirements to the Army Chief uh, and to air, the Air Force and uh, several other sensitive documents, which are basically India's most sensitive secrets out there, including exactly how much ammunition India will need over the next one to five years. And uh, that brings us to uh, the deeper recognition that Abhishek Varma, there's much more than meets the eye. So yes, uh, there are very, very sensitive dealings here, extremely dangerous material which has been disclosed out to the public. All right, Namrita, thank you very much for joining us uh, with those details. And just, uh, you know, for our viewers, what we are showing you today is not where it ends. We've been able to access more documents uh, which, which affect not just the Defense Ministry, but the Ministry of Home Affairs, state police forces, just an idea of how far the rot went. This is a system which is designed to import weapons without middlemen and without bribes. We've seen so many cases. Augusta Westland is another one where this is simply not taking place the way it should.